My, my name's Sophie Scott and I'm a cognitive neuroscientist and I'm particularly interested in how we communicate with each other using our voices. And as part of this I've been looking at how we convey and understand emotion in the voice. And one of the things that I've come up against quite quickly working in this area is how laughter is used by humans. And laughter is very interesting because it just hasn't been looked at very much scientifically. If you look at the history of how we've investigated emotions, a lot of it's been done with the face and it's all things like fear, disgust, anger. As soon as you start looking at the voice, you start finding positive emotions like laughter. And it's really striking when you start to investigate it that laughter, for example, is the only positive emotion we've found which is cross-culturally recognised. So laughter is recognised the same in the UK as it is in the, amongst the Himba of northern Namibia who have no contact with the West and no television. They're not, they're, not coming, they're not picking up our habits by seeing us on films or anything. And English people recognise Himba laughter and Himba people recognise English laughter. It's, it's exactly the same. And you why it out and realise, of course, you would expect it to be because humans aren't the only animals that laugh. Laughter is actually quite a common behaviour, it seems, amongst mammals and it's very strongly associated with tickling in infancy. So human babies first laugh when they're tickled, rat babies first laugh when they're tickled and then it develops on and becomes used in play and then what you find it within adult humans is it's really strongly associated with conversation. So if you ask people what makes you laugh, people will say jokes. If you look at when people laugh, they laugh when they're talking with their friends. So in fact, although we think about laughter primarily as being something to do with humour, actually we use laughter a great deal as a social tool. We use it as a sign that we like people. We show that, so it's, use it as a sign that we agree with people, that we're affiliated with people, that we understand what they're saying. And it's very interesting if you start looking at the brain basis of this behaviour as well because it really does seem that when you hear somebody laughing, even if you're having a brain scan, which is a tremendously unamusing situation to be in, your brain gets ready to join in with the laughter. We see priming of the same brain areas that are involved in moving your face to smile when you hear somebody laughing, even if you don't move your face. And we don't see that for other emotions. So other emotions can be highly emotionally contagious. If you hear somebody going, Ugh, you know, it's very hard not to feel a little bit, Ugh, but you don't necessarily start going Ugh, as well. Whereas when you hear somebody laughing, you're getting ready to join in. And I suspect that's actually something that we, we basically learn to do because we're social animals and we're using it in this very social way. Something else that's very interesting is different uses of laughter. So one of the things that we're looking at is the difference between real laughs when you absolutely cannot not laugh and social laughter, which is perhaps more you know, deliberately produced. We've been very good at telling the difference between the two and you can see that happening in brains as well. So when you hear somebody producing a social laugh, we see all these brain areas associated with mentalising, um, probably because you're trying to work out why they're laughing. There's also other interesting dimensions. So laughter feels very good. And the work of Robin Dunbar, who's part of the exhibit, is looking at exactly why that happens. Now, Robin Dunbar's coming to this as being interested in the evolution of language, and he's got the idea that we were getting together and laughing with each other before we were talking with each other. And I think that's very interesting. And he, one of the things he's found is that if you laugh, you actually release endorphins and you feel less pain. So there's actually there is a, you know, a physiological aspect to this good feeling that you get associated with laughter and I think that's probably feeding into this strong social use because it's helping you get on with your friends, show your friends you like them, help you try and make people that you like like you and you're getting rewarded by that. It, it feels good to be doing this. I'm slightly worried that I'm going to start ruining humour for everybody <laughs> because when you start looking for social laughs, you actually find that everywhere. So if you watch the audience in a big comedy venue, a lot of the laughter actually isn't necessarily people helpless with mirth. People are laughing at the right point in the comedy. And actually, that's also very interesting. So one of the things we're going to be doing at the Royal Society Summer Science Exhibition is we're going to have live comedy and we're going to be wiring up the comedians and the people in the audience. And we're going to be looking at how they start co coordinating their breathing with one another and what happens when the audience start laughing to try and get at some of these aspects of the sort of dynamics that I think comedians are naturally have some insight into about how you can actually time laughter and encourage laughter by sort of coordinating everybody together and get everything going at the same time. There's this idea that laughter is the best medicine and it's kind of been bubbling around for a long while that if you give people you know things to laugh at they will get better sooner and certainly 
you could see that in terms of, you know, this release of endorphins, if you, f you know, there's a natural painkiller being released when you laugh, um, and that, you know, could be contributing to an improved recovery or certainly feeling better. I think the thing that might be missing from that is what they mean by laughter is sitting somebody down in front of a funny film and letting them laugh at that, whereas people laugh more if we're with their friends and they, than they will do if they're on their own, and they'll laugh more if they like the people that they're with than if they don't like the people that they're with. So I think what we need to do probably is to start incorporating into this medical approach to laughter some of this social dimension because I think that's a really important aspect of it if you think about laughter as only being to do with humor then you sort of miss this entire social dimension the social dimension is absolutely central to us we are social prim primates the most important things in our environments are the other humans around us